final part of this week's notes. So, I'm going to draw a simplified double helix. Okay, this is one of the strands of the double-stranded molecule. These are the sugar phosphate bonds that hold the nucleotides together. Then on the other side, I am drawing the complementary strand that is based on the base pairing. Adenine to thymine, cytosine to guanine. So if I gave you one side, you could easily synthesize the complementary strand. So I have my ladder. I'm not worried about it being twisted or anything like that. I'm making it very simplified. So T-A-C-G-A-T-A-C-A, -A -A, that would be my gene. One side has the gene, the other not the gene. And it exists as a double helix. And based on early research, this is the only way it could work. It is absolutely the only way it could work. And I'm going to show you why with replication. So basically, in blue, we have our original double-stranded DNA. Okay? But it's time for this cell to divide. Let's say it's a skin cell. And they have a high mitotic rate, so it's pretty quick. Before cell division can occur and two identical daughter cells be produced, including the DNA that's part of them, replication has to happen. Now again, enzymes are involved. One of the videos talked about the leading and the lagging strands. We're not going to worry about all of that because that is more for a majors level course. Okay, but instead I'm just going to really simplify this. So, how I'm going to show you is I'm going to take those two strands and split them. That's by the enzyme. What is that? Uh, well, I See, I don't teach it. I don't remember the enzymes. So it's split. It's not going to happen quite as easily as I'm showing you. Okay, so it splits. Then we have our new strands. Okay, <clears throat> so it is as simple as redoing the base pairs. Um, I believe on one of the videos he put it to the outside. I always put them to the inside. Okay? <clears throat> this is identical to this, except that one side of it, this side, is new. This is identical to this, except the other side compared to this one is new. That is the semi-conservative nature of DNA replication. So how replication happens is the original double helix splits. 
and each side of it serves as a template for a new DNA molecule, or excuse me, just the, well, to, to complete it, to make it a new double helix. So one double helix to two double helices. And we have the gene here. This one's not the gene. And this one, now the new one is the gene. This is why it is in a double helix structure, because there is no other way to give us new genes than this. So now each new cell, because this will go into one cell, this will go into the other cell, will have a gene. Each of them will have not, a not the gene side too, but then when they divide, both of their progeny get a gene, and those genes are necessary. So that's really cool. Another thing is, let's see, I've already dropped this almost on my toes this morning. Then when this is all condensed, This equals this. In fact, if we go to the karyotypes, let me use red and blue, even though that's kind of following the, uh, <coughs> the gender roles. So in a, in Pair number one, remember it's pretty long. We have the one from dad. And the one from mom. And we do that all along. the 22 and then the sex chromosome so they are ready to divide and one cell will get this half one cell will get this half or one cell will get this and one will get this okay now just one more quick thing to show you so hopefully to describe that and make that make a little more sense. Oh, notice Gattaca, except I don't have the extra T. G-A-T-A-C-A, -A -A, it would be G-A-T-T-A-C-A. -A -A. I always use that as my example. I do that because I can remember it really easily. And uh, basically, um, it shows you that that movie Gattaca, if you've ever seen that, I know it's kind of old. But uh, it, they were actually quite clever with naming it. So it was guanine, adenine, thymine, thymine, adenine, cytosine, adenine. So yeah, pretty clever on their part.